little bit of Tony Bennett with Bill Sharlap. We heard The Way You Look Tonight. You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. Music and Mavens pays tribute to the legendary singer Tony Bennett at their next midday concert. Featuring singer Aaron Hutton and pianist Danny Carroll, the afternoon will showcase some of the many songs Bennett was best known for. To tell us more, Aaron has joined me in studio. Welcome here. Thank you so much. Uh, wonderful to have you, and wonderful to hear a little bit of Tony Bennett singing to, to tee up this interview. Just what a, a good voice, way to start eh? the day. <laughs> yeah, ain't that the truth? The, the last of the legendary crooners died uh, last year in July at the age of, of, of 96. Um, when you were first approached to do this show, what, what came to mind? I mean, Tony Bennett, what, 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 what first struck your fancy? Well, I knew that Tony Bennett had a lot of music to access. Like you said, he almost he, he almost turned 97 uh, last year. So I knew there was lots of material to uh, pull from, uh, lots of options. Um, you know, as a singer, that's where I go first. Like, what can mm-hmm. I actually sing? But um, the more I looked into it, I realized that he actually had an amazing life. And I like to sort of chat as I sing. And there's lots and lots of stories to tell about Tony's life and his achievements, his advocacy, and uh, how that all contributed to his artistry. So that was sort of enough of a push to say, yeah, this is this is going to be great. Uh, born Anthony Dominic Benedetto in Astoria um, in, in New York's uh, Queens borough, um, I think... And correct me if I'm wrong, I think he lost his dad very young at the age of 10 or something like that. I know he went on to serve in, in the war. Um, I mean, just yep. such a fascinating individual. Like you say, so much more than just the singer, right? We so yeah. often wrap ourselves up in the voice. Is there one story that really kind of caught your attention when you were kind of prepping for the show before we get to the music that you're going to be singing yeah. and all that stuff? Well, I think I think the the biggest thing that really struck me was the kind of... I guess, roller coaster that he had. I mean, he he served in the war and that changed his life. And it influenced um, what he did moving forward and and his outlook on life. He signed his first uh, record label in the 50s. And then he was hugely popular in the 60s. And then in the 70s and 80s, he kind of was finding his feet again as the rise of uh, rock music and uh, pop and, uh, you know, disco, all of these other genres were coming to the surface. But then in the 90s, he had this resurgent that was um, equivocal or maybe even better than he had in the nine, uh, in the 60s. And so that's sort of the most interesting thing about his life he, of course, had these struggles with drugs and uh, in the 80s. And then in the 90s, he really turned his whole life around and, you know, continued into the 2000s with that sort of success. Um, a hit maker across seven decades. And speaking of longevity, the oldest person to ever reach number one on U.S. album sales. He was 88 with that yeah. duets album with Lady Gaga, which is a, yeah. a great one. Um, this and, and then in 19, when he was 95, he released an album of new music. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And he had that big farewell show in New York. I mean, like, it's just an unbelievable career. It, yeah. it, it truly is. And I, I know you're going to parse that throughout this performance. Um, smooth vibrato, this comfortable, confident sound. Um, I, I read he stayed in vocal shape by singing bel canto tunes. D- did you have you heard that too? That is very true. Yeah, that's actually sort of how I connect with him and his style too. It's because obviously I'm going to sing his music differently, but we sort of come at it from similar approaches. He studied yeah bel canto at a young age, and that is what he took moving forward. Yeah. Uh, as he sort of became this jazz crooner type guy. So he's very skilled, very um, well-versed in music uh, technique. And um, yeah, you can you can hear it when he's singing in his 80s and 90s. It's there. Um, well, like you say, you're a classically trained singer, a Rose Bowl winner, an opera idol winner, uh, who really can sing it all from the Baroque to contemporary, appearing on stages of all sizes in and around town uh, with premier companies and ensembles. Um, I- I'm curious for you, when it comes to the crooner tradition, d- do you feel right at home in this? Is it something <laughs> where you're just like, what an opportunity this is to flex a different sort of vocal muscle? H- how does it feel for you? Yeah, absolutely. It's a different sort of freedom that comes along with singing this type of music. 
This is, I'm, luck, I'm lucky to say that this is my third uh, engagement with the Music and Mavens concert series. My first go was singing the music of uh, Ger- the Gershwins. Mm-hmm, the Gershwins and then, song, yeah. And then, oh, and, Blue Eyes. And then Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I get to do it all over again with Tony Bennett. And I'm really, really lucky to be collaborating on this concert with Danny Carroll because he has inspired me uh, to improv, to just sort of live in the moment and maybe, you know, waffle in and out of the melody, but come back to the home base here and there. And so I'm, I'm, I've, I can honestly say I'm still learning, <laughs> um, but uh, learning in a way that is very freeing. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I get to stay true to who I am and my voice, um, but, but singing this type of music is completely different and uh, just totally liberating. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so the one thing we haven't yet talked about is the actual music itself. And uh, as you know, listeners are, are well aware, there's a lot of music to choose from. Yeah. Released more than 70 albums, earned 19 competitive Grammys, most of them coming after he turns 60, which again is just a, a wild number. Uh, two primetime Emmys and the list goes on and on. H- how did you go about picking tunes for, for this show, Aaron? Yeah, well, to be honest, I... At, when I was starting to program this concert, I had to do a lot of listening because I knew who I knew who Frank Sinatra was. I knew who Dean Martin was and Sammy Davis Jr. and Andy Williams and all those guys. But Tony Bennett, he was always there for me, but I didn't know his catalog of music. So mm-hmm. I started listening right away because I knew he had an extensive career, but I needed to hear what it was all about musically. And so... That's where I started, and then it was n- no time had passed before I had too many songs to <laughs> choose from, and so I I had to scale it back. I mean, all of his stuff in the '60s is great; it's amazing. And then the stuff that he brought back in a new way in the '90s and 2000s, it's great so <laughs> i mean I, I i'm i'm sad to say it's only an hour long concert yeah. and so some of the some of the good good songs that uh tony made famous aren't going to be on the program on thursday unfortunately but um but i think we've uh, narrowed it down to uh some some really good stuff i i think people are going to leave satisfied and i think people are going to maybe find themselves humming along, of course, like admiring your wonderful voice and the skill of Danny (laughs) Carroll at the piano, but also like humming along. It's one of those shows that I think you're just going to leave feeling good, you know, yeah. like, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. And, and what an opportunity to, to get out midday, 2 PM down at the Rady JCC, a tribute show to Tony Bennett featuring Aaron Hutton. Aaron, thanks so much for being here this morning. Thank you so much for the chat. You can find more details up at classic107.com under the events tab or head to RadyJCC.com as we hear a little bit more of Tony Bennett.